Good evening. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Glad to see you. I trust that you had a, a productive day today. And I'm trusting that you were strong. That's a choice that you have to make. I know doing living in this world system is a challenge. It's really a heck of a challenge. But uh, by standing on God's word and walking that and, and embracing your faith in him, you become overcomers. You become conquerors, and you don't become conquered, okay? So uh, let us turn to now in the Constitution of Matthew's, uh, the 10th chapter, and we're going to um, read from the 16th, uh, the 5th verse. And I want to tell you, just, just, just emphasize to you, remember this is King Kingdom Cultural Center. This is not debate. This is not uh, what you want to argue about the debate. See, as an ambassador, you don't you don't argue about uh, what the king says, uh, what the constitution states. You follow it, and 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 you live it. And trust me, there are rewards in what you're doing. Okay, let us read here. And um, this is when Jesus told his disciples. Uh, he had picked. He had picked the twelve, and he told them what to do, and told them to go out. And let us read from the fifth chapter and take our time. Okay, I trust that many of you have your constitution. These twelve Jesus sent out and command them, saying, "Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans." Now, I want to give you a little clarification on this. The reason why Jesus told him not to go in the way of the Gentiles is because he knew his purpose. Jesus told him to go to the Jews, the people of promise, not the Gentiles. Now, who's a Gentile? A Gentile is everyone that who wasn't a Jew. It could be a Greek, uh, and let me put this, Greek, Italian, Chinese. It was everyone that wasn't a Jew. That was a they were a Gentile. They was considered Gentiles, and Gentiles were considered to be dogs, or something like the African American uh, in this country back in and uh, the 15th and the 16th century. Okay, uh, they were considered that way. Now we go on, and Jesus told them. But I want you to understand something when he told them what he when when he sent them out, what he was telling them to do. Let us read. Let's go on in the sixth verse. <laughs> But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I just stipulated that. The lost sheep of the house. Let me, let me share something with you. Um, you got to keep in mind, I, I, I repeat that again, that the people that are lost, those who are around you, I, I, I'm going to bring it somewhat to a modern day. Let your life shine then. Jesus was not effective in Nazareth due to the fact that they didn't look at him as the son of God. They, they looked at him as a young carpenter's son. Now, everybody is not going to accept his word. Every not, everybody's not accepting it when they hear me speak it. They don't accept it when I put it on the website. I had a little uh, interaction, I think it was yesterday or today. In regard to uh, one man, he didn't, you know, he, he wanted to become argumentative. I'm not there to argue. I put the word out there. If you disagree with it, it's all right with me. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep well. I did my job. I did, and I did it with love. And it hurts me when I see that they don't accept it because this is their life. The word of God is your life. Don't, don't, don't fool yourself. It's your life. So we go on and read... So Jesus said, don't go to, go to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to your own first, because that's what he was called. Later on down the road, you'll find where God, Jesus picked Paul on the road to Damascus to give the message to the Gentile, but this wasn't the time. So one thing or another thing, you got to know when your time is, okay? He, that wasn't Jesus' purpose. Jesus' purpose was to send the disciples out to the lost sheep of Israel. Let us go on. And go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven 
is at hand. Now, you're going to find, I can quote scriptures for the next 25 minutes about uh, Matthews of 4 and 17, Matthews 4 and 23, where Jesus specifically said, preach the kingdom of heaven. Now, why was he so, so specific? Due to the fact that he know that these, there's other messages out there that's being preached on faith, on, on healing, on uh, um, well, some of the other things, uh, uh, prophecy, blessings, financial blessings, uh, uh, all these. But no, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see, now let me give you a synopsis of what, it, what, what entails with that. When you're in the kingdom of God, all of these things that I just mentioned that others are preaching are there. The Father just wants you to understand and to know that His Word will not and cannot be changed. See, once a king gives His Word, it's a done deal. A lot of times when I'm talking to people and, 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 and I'm interacting with them and they, they you know, sometimes they want to come in and defile. I remember when I, when I was a cop at that time, they want to come in and defile. They didn't want to listen or I, I want to do this. I said, no, but this is it. It's done. And the same thing with the word of God. It's done. Thou shall not steal. It's done. And Oh, I didn't take that, no, you, but you was assisting to it. You, 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 you was in league with it. I, oh, I didn't, see, once you have a heart of, of, of humility and a heart of honesty and a heart of huh, righteousness. Now, what does that mean? Right standing with God. You're not going to try to tap dance or have an excuse or try to come up with your own ideologies. Why not to live God's word? It's important. And then, and then and another thing that once you, once you come to the realization that God's word is his word and it doesn't change, your life will begin to evolve in such a manner that others will see it. Going back to what Jesus said, he says, you are not the salt of the earth. And if the salt have lost its flavor, his saltiness, whereas it can be salt. Salt brings out the best out of any meat or out of any meat. It tastes better. It causes that piece of that what you're eating to taste better, that you can enjoy it better. And that's the way we as the citizens of the kingdom should be. Now those, you know, I wrote an article today on Facebook and, 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 you know, and, and when, when I'm, when I'm reading it and when I feel the leading of the Holy Spirit, I really don't care if people like it or not. I'm saying it in love. If they don't like it, that's their problem. They'll get over it. But what I said was, I've never in the whole world, and I've been around this country, California, all over, teaching God's word and preaching God's word to the point, but I wasn't satisfied because during that time, I really didn't know, I felt something was missing and I found out what it is. But I felt something was missing, but I found that so many, when Christians fall from grace, or they, or they, they, they used to call it back then, backslide, when they fell and, and they, they, they may have done something and they felt bad about it and wanted to come back to the church, I found that, quote, unquote, the Christians, they were the only one to kill their wounded. I, you couldn't understand it. They kill their wounded. But citizens of the kingdom don't. Because if you check that word, he told, in, in Romans, he told them, hey, brothers, Bring the brother back up to grace. Encourage that brother. Build him up. He made a bad choice. And if, at, at certain points, if he, doesn't want, if he doesn't want to acknowledge that and, 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 and come back to the fall, then the word says, leave him as an unbeliever. And Jesus never called anyone to be 
called after him. Now, look, I have to go now at this present time. My time has ran out. But I want you to keep in mind, once again, I just want to tell you to remind you, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is your greatest asset because Jesus is the foundation for your belief. You have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next session.